Here we have an exam question involving uh, interpreting pedigree charts. Now, I just made an earlier video about interpreting pedigree charts. If you're not familiar with how you figure out if a trait is autosomal or uh, X-linked or dominant or recessive, I recommend you go back and watch that video. Uh, if you're confident in that, we can go on and we can try and uh, answer an exam question based on this uh, idea. So, here we have uh, a syndrome. Not even sure how to pronounce that. Ehlers Danos syndrome. Um, don't like it when they use names of diseases on exam questions. Let's just call this a disease. And anytime I see this in the question or in the answers or anywhere else, I'm just going to call it a disease. It doesn't matter. The name of the disease doesn't make any difference. They just put those big words, names of diseases, in there. Uh, just is a reading comprehension thing. So this is a disease, it's a genetic disorder in which skin joints are much more elastic than normal. This disorder most commonly inherited as an autosomal dominant mutation. Now, if it's autosomal dominant, that's pretty important. Autosomal dominant. The reason that's important is that that um, tells us the mode of inheritance. So there's certain things we should be looking for in a pedigree chart. So here we have four pedigree charts, and we have to figure out well, which one of these four pedigree charts is autosomal dominant. First thing I'm going to look for is dominant versus recessive. In a dominant pedigree chart, what we learned in the previous video, if you watched that one, or what you should have learned in, in your studies, is that a recessive trait, if it's recessive, then you could have an individual with the trait where neither parent has the trait. For example, if I look at answer B here, I can see that there is an individual right here who has the trait and neither parent has the trait, which tells me that that pedigree chart is for a recessive trait, not a dominant trait. And we are clearly here looking for a dominant trait. So I can eliminate that answer. As a matter of fact, that's all I need to know to answer this question because in answer C, I see the exact same situation. An individual has the trait and neither parent has the trait. Therefore, answer C must be a recessive pedigree chart. Uh, in D, I can see the same thing. I have an individual right here. That individual, neither parent has the trait. Therefore, that's a recessive pedigree chart. So three out of four of these are recessive. A could be a dominant pedigree chart. The reason it could be dominant is every individual has the trait. And what can we see if parent has the trait? And there's no exception to that. It's a very small pedigree chart, but we can't find an exception to that, which means this one could be dominant. And since that's the only one that could be dominant, A is our answer. Now, the other part of this is autosomal. Um, with such a small pedigree chart, it's hard to tell if it's autosomal or not. But again, we've narrowed down to this answer anyway. We have two females with the trait, two males with the trait. In a dominant trait, we expect more females than males. In this case, we have an equal number, which means it very well could be autosomal. So it's certainly consistent with being autosomal and dominant. So our answer is A. Now, that's a relatively straightforward one because they've clearly given you three pedigree charts that are recessive, only one dominant. There's really only one way we could come up with an answer for this one. But let's take a look at another one. I'll just scroll down here. Here's another exam question that deals with pedigree charts, and this deals with cystic fibrosis. It gives us a note here, fairly important note. Always pay attention to the notes. Cystic fibrosis in this family is caused by a recessive allele found on chromosome 7. So it's a recessive allele. It's telling us that. We didn't necessarily need them to tell us that. We have that information in the pedigree chart. We have an individual with the trait. We have neither parent with the trait. Therefore, this is definitely a recessive trait. So we've got that much. Okay, we did not need to, to have that note, technically. So let's take a look at what the question is actually asking. Let me fix that. Come back to normal here. There we go. Prior to performing amniocentesis, a genetic counselor collected pedigree information regarding the incidence of cystic fibrosis within this family. The row that indicates the genotypes of individuals 1, 1, that would be 1, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 2. Yes. 
So we've got several choices here. I'm not going to look at the choices right away. I know that it's a recessive allele. What I don't know is this, is cystic fibrosis X-linked or is it autosomal? Well, we need to figure that out before we look at any of the answers. Uh, what we need to look at here is, first of all, is there a balance between males and females? Uh, if there's an imbalance favoring males, then this could possibly be X-linked. I see one male, one female, so probably not X-linked. But we need to prove it. We're going to get an answer to this. We need more than that. So we have individual 2-4 is kind of key to the question here. Individual 2-4, even though it's not one of the ones we need to know for the answer, um, we can tell because she has the trait and her father does not have the trait. That tells me that this is autosomal. If her father had the trait, then it could possibly be excellent. But father doesn't have the trait, therefore this is not excellent. This is definitely autosomal. So not only is it recessive, it's also autosomal. And that's key to the, the answer here because two of the answers deal with X-linked traits. Answer C and answer D are dealing with X and Y chromosomes, which would be appropriate if this were an X-linked trait, but it's not an X-linked trait. So we can eliminate those answers immediately. Can't be those. Now, the answer that we're looking for, if this is an autosomal recessive trait, well, then individual 2-2, this guy right here, he's got to have two recessive alleles, two little letters in order for him to have that trait. And we see that in this answer, in answer A. Now, just to double check, we'll make sure that uh, individual 1-1 one, one, and 1-2 one, can both be big A, little A. And as a matter of fact, they kind of have to be big A, little A because neither one of them has cystic fibrosis, so they must have a dominant allele. And they have produced a child, or two children technically, that are little a, little a, which means they each had to possess a recessive allele, which means we're good with big a, little a, or heterozygous, and our answer here is definitely answer a. That's the one we pick. 